we'll let that first one come in. Yeah. He's coming in. I'll take the one behind it. It's quite nice out. I'll, I'll talk you through which one I was going to shoot. And uh, you've got the one that's in close. Take the further one. We've got another one coming in from the left. He might come in, I'm not sure. It's time for a catch up with Crow. We haven't filmed Andy since first meeting his keen as mustard grandson Regan back at the end of February. I'll tell you where it is. Do you see it? Today he and his cousin Gary are either end of a field protecting a crop of peas. These two are like peas in a pod. With social distancing, David cool. won't be joining them in that pod, and yep. Andy builds an extension on the side of the That's hide. It. Architecturally speaking, it's more like a new wing. There you go, David. Lovely little hide. We can communicate. Two metres between us. A good two metres. More like four. Well, yeah, I am a little bit. But no, no, it's good to get you back out again, Dave. We stayed away from each other um, for different reasons. Not because you don't like me, but... Um, we've been chatting. Oh, of course, we've been chatting pretty regular, but this old Corby thing is it's something you've got to take serious. So, um, yeah, we're here today. Gary's invited me down. There's a few pigeons feeding on some peas here. Um, you've turned up about the right time. Um, you didn't know when he was going to be able to come being a Wednesday, getting the show and that ready, so no, it's good to see you. And just hopefully things will soon get back to normal and we can get back to where we were before, which would be nice. But we'll see, we'll see. I suppose, as, yeah, being an agricultural worker as you are. No, it's just made no difference. Really that much? No, it hasn't. I've been, I've been one of the lucky ones, really. I've been stuck indoors with the missus all the time and um, I think I would have, well, yeah. <laughs> So no, it's, I'm lucky because it hasn't, it hasn't changed what I do. I'm still going in five, six o'clock in the morning. This, at the moment, because it's been so hot, I've been working late spraying and yes, I've caught up with my spraying, which is quite nice. I mean, it ain't gonna be long before we're into harvest. So it soon comes back around, I reckon another, another two weeks, three weeks maximum, and we'll be spraying the, the rape off. So it'll be another two, two and two and a half weeks after that. So. First week of July and back on the combine again. Boy, how are you coping with this weather? If you look across these peas, see how they're yellow? It's, it's, it's just lack of moisture. It's not getting the moisture, it's not getting away. Being on this heavy old clay, it bakes out and that's the end of it then. Um, and here comes a couple of pigeons coming in. So, I think it'd be, look at that. I think it'd be quite a good afternoon. We'll get a few shots, hopefully, on camera. But yeah, it, it does need some rain. And, but it doesn't lie as much on the horizon. If sorry, that sounds, thunder. That sounds like thunder over there. <laughs> it, is, it is black over there and hopefully it stays there. But um, yeah, yeah. You're a bloody Jonah you are, David. You brought the bad weather with you. But yeah, by the way, we are still two metres. So. Yeah. But, um, right, let's get in the hide and we can talk from the hide. We can talk from the hide, hide then. Come on in, Regan, get in the hide. Quick, quick, here. Regan! Regan! Do you want it, David? Perfect. I'm not going to see a great deal of you, actually, in this, this, this sort of... <laughs> it could be anybody. I could be filming anybody. It's Crow. It's definitely Crow. Want it? Yep. Crow has already had some shooting and has about 30 birds. It sounds like Gary is having more luck. Gary is definitely in the otter spot of the two. He's greedy like that, isn't he? He is greedy. Yeah, he's been watching it for the last three weeks. And you're his guest, that's outrageous. Oh, I know I'm his guest. I love you really, Gary. It's <laughs> not what he said 10 minutes ago. <laughs> no, I, I, well, it's early days yet, they will start moving. But no, I've had some quite, quite nice ones come around. A couple of nice left and rights. I had a bit of a blip at, a bit of a mare at the start. I didn't, I didn't shoot too well for a start. I'd... Was Regan putting pressure on you? Whew, was he? Has Grandad been shooting any birds today then, Regan? Uh, yeah. Lots though, or, or are you a bit disappointed with the number he shot? I haven't shot any birds 
Oh, shot, no. shot Sam, mate. Would you prefer to be with Uncle Gary? Yeah. yeah. He's having more shots, isn't he, mate? Are you decorating Rosa? I'm trying to make Rosa Yeah. Very pretty. Oh, you bugger. Oof. After a clear up, Andy shows how you can tell if the pigeons have been eating peas. So yeah, you just pointed out the colour of the beaks there. Yeah, we Andy. just had, we just had a bit of a pick up, and three birds that Regan's come back with, all three of them. You can see on their top of their beak, they're green. It's just something that's in the peas. It it just happens to stick to their. It's a bit sticky there. It, uh, the stalks are so it sticks to their beaks. You very rarely get it in any other crops, but. Um, you always get it with peas when they're feeding on peas. On the decoy, do you want it? Yeah. Let's have a look at what damage they've been doing to this yeah. crop, which is struggling thanks to the driest May on record. This is a bit sparse here, where the, the crop needs water. You see they've been in here, look. They've taken the flowering shoot completely off of there and here. They've taken the top, the top shoot out that's coming. This one here, they, they, they just land on the top of it because it's such a, a mat. They land on it. See, they've taken the the flowering head out of there, it's gone, the flowering head's there. This is one that hasn't been touched and the flowers are just coming. So that, just that particular plant is? That particular plant won't flower now. Um, uh, there might be another branch come out, no there's no more branches on that one. Um, but once they've taken that, that's the end of that. So this one here, look, it's completely gone. See, there's no, no head to it at all, they've taken that. They've taken the tentacles off, even, even there. Gary said there was like 50 here a week ago and it's just built up every day he's ringing me saying god there's more there there's more there's more there and they do they build up really quick they, they've come out of the woods now and and this is about all there is to feed on and this and a bit of clover but and spring rape's another good one but they're on this and it doesn't take them long to get a crop full on it there's enough leaf here so do you think there's been greater damage because of lockdown do you think there will be well there's a lot of people that haven't been out they've um they should have bred well early on so I think there'll be a lot more pigeons about it. what we last year we couldn't shoot them right the way through. And then it's the same same this year with the, the lockdown. So but, um, what happen next year then I wonder. The general licence, COVID, and now we're gonna <laughs> yeah. come in, come I in threes. I don't know, they do come in threes. It will get sorted and we'll be alright. That's that's the third. Okay. <laughs> yeah, two bad ones and a good one. But I, it hasn't bothered me, so I've, I've still been shooting, so I've been having a good time. So I just feel sorry for the people that they, they like to get out on the spring drillings and they've missed out on it all because they haven't been allowed to go out. So there could be a lot of pigeons around this year. There are certainly a lot of corvids. Could it be the case that those who've had the chance to shoot have been focusing on woodies and not crows? Andy has put himself in a hedge line today with a stereo decoy setup. Birds and whirlies either side. When I first turned up here, the chap was spraying. He hadn't sprayed this field, but he'd sprayed that one. So what I did, I just stuck a a pattern out there just to get me started to get a few in the bag but a lot of the birds are coming over the far hedge so what they're doing they're, they're, they're seeing these ones the other side it's just to really attract their attention they're folding to come into it and then it's pulling them back around into this side well that's what's been happening so that we had two come straight into the decoys there just a minute and I just couldn't see them through the hedge you hadn't been spraying you wouldn't have done it then I would have done yeah but I would have had to pat them further down oh, to try and pull them through any other... before we pack up Andy has some new kit on test Nick Tate has built some new hide poles to his specifications. And if your hide poles are not as strong as these, you'll be needing a new product by viewer Henry Darling, hide spikes. Right, I've been sent these from Henry. You put the spike in there, knock this in with a hammer, especially a year like this on hard ground, so they're going to be put through their paces um, over the next week or so. You put that in there, drive that into the ground, right into the ground, and then your hide pole, stands into the top of it, as so. And the other thing, I've been on at Nick Tate. I said to him, is there any chance he could uh, make me some hide poles? And he's come up with these little beauties. They've got nice long spikes. They've got a hook there to hold the net. Um, so you can put the net on the top, pull it up, hold it tight, stop it blowing out at the bottom. Fully adjustable, just undo this here. So I'll show you the height they are. They're waist height uh, for little people like me, mate. Um, and they extend right up right up to there, above me. It's no good for filming, is it? It's no good for filming, but I always, always start high on the sides, so I have it high to come down and round. And if I've got a hide out in the field, 
always have it a bit higher behind me. Um, but yeah, he, he, he stalked these out and they're brilliant. They really are good. In How them. much is he knocking those out for then? I don't know. Christ knows. I really don't know. And what's your cut? I don't get a cut out of it. What? No, I know. He gives me all the stuff, the prototypes. We have. I have got the prototype over there and he come up with it, he rushed it out because I've been giving him stick for a long time to get me some high poles. He brought the first one up and there was a few problems with it. He's ironing them out, but it's just a height. It's a size, there's a bit of weight there, but they are made well. These, I can bang these in the ground with a hammer, uh, but normal high poles, they're not made quite as well as these. So these would be ideal for that. I'm quite looking forward to using these, giving them a go. Happy. It's but, the, what's the, it's the Andy Dandy? Andy Dandy high pole. Andy Dandy, back. That's it. Back. Back. We'll report back with Andy's thoughts, that's and that's it, it for our afternoon on the peas. It wasn't a big day, but it was a day. <laughs> and like so many oh, others around the country, yeah. if it. not the world, it's nice to get out and have a few shots. Good girl.